G'day, my name is Anthony and in this video I'm going to introduce you into the wonderful world of Warhammer Age of Sigma. If you're new to Warhammer Age of Sigma, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our community. This video is the first of a series aimed to teach you everything you need to know about confidently building your army and playing the game. We'll slowly build up your foundation of knowledge and I won't make you drink from a fire hose. If you're new to AOS Coach, you'll find a wide variety of videos and tactics and list building discussions that you're going to find valuable after these videos. So without further ado, let's get started learning Warhammer Age of Sigma. Warhammer Age of Sigma follows the realm spanning war between dozens of richly detailed factions. The Mortal Realm's epic setting is populated by powerful heroes and magnificent monsters. They play host to a vast realm spanning war between the forces of order, chaos, destruction and death. So what is Warhammer Age of Sigma? Age of Sigma is a tabletop miniature war game created by Games Workshop that is set in a unique fantasy world full of avenging heroes, bloodthirsty villains, rampaging raiders and defenders of their home. When you enter the world of Warhammer you will have the opportunity to create your own story by building, painting and playing with your miniatures. This hobby is rich and fulfilling. It provides a creative outlet, you'll meet new people, some of them will become great friends while testing your strength and strategic thinking and decision making during the game and while having fun. In our online connected world you will be accessing an international community where you can find places to share your photos of your hobby and your games, you can find advice for list building and tactics and inspiration for your next paint scheme or your next army. Games Workshop games are happening all around you and you may not even know that Age of Sigma is happening in your community. If you already have friends playing the game, this is the easiest way to get started. Playing on a kitchen table, playing at your garage, playing on the floor, playing at your friend's house, or if you are thinking about getting into Age of Sigma, bringing in a friend with you is going to make your life easier. Games Workshop have dedicated Warhammer stores where you will find like-minded players, helpful staff, beautiful tables full of obstacles that you can freely play on. If you don't have a Games Workshop or a Warhammer store close to you, you can play at your local game stores. These local game stores are independent stores that will often stock not just Games Workshop products, but also other games. But we won't speak about them here. Both Warhammer and your local game stores will often have Age of Sigma nights where you can play some games on the weekend or maybe on a certain night. Maybe they'll have some painting seminars if you want to learn how to paint. Uh, and also you get to get to know the community, which is a wonderful opportunity. Your games clubs are another place where you can play. These are, these are independent but licensed venues. You might be playing at a uh, community hall, you could be playing at a school, you could be playing at like, uh, in Australia we have things like RSLs, you might have like a licensed uh, sports club. These types of places you can find on Facebook, they'll often have a Facebook event, or maybe a Google search will bring up a local community. These clubs will often charge you a few dollars, but you'll often get to play on their tables uh, and it obviously goes to paying rent, so uh, very supportive of paying those few extra dollars. If you are at school, you might be able to start up a school league. You might find that school leagues are happening already around you. If not and you are a teacher, you could set up a school league to introduce kids into the world of Warhammer, or you could maybe ask one of your teachers to actually see if you can take a demountable or a room and play during a lunch break or maybe after hours. The final place that you might want to play Warhammer is local events. So there are local events and tournaments that are happening all through the year, whether it's in your, your state or your city or happening all around you. Um, there are big events where uh, places like CanCon, Adepticon, Blood and Glory. Uh, I run a, a large event called Sydney GT where this might have 100, 200, 300 players playing. And, and while it might sound competitive, it's also a great opportunity to get three to five or six games in over the weekend. Have a bit of a, a geek weekend. They're a lot of fun. Again, you get to meet a whole bunch of new people. Uh, and I actually really look forward to tournaments throughout the year. Uh, you may not go there to win, but you go there and have a great time. And I guarantee you, you will have a great time. So to get started, you're going to need a couple of things at minimum. These minimum resources you might borrow from a friend. However, you might even even have them in your house. But I would highly recommend you buy them as, as, as soon as you can to get started. So the couple of things you're going to need to get started is first miniatures. 
You're gonna, you know, we'll touch on that very soon, but you will need some miniatures to represent your models on the table. You may borrow it from a friend, you may be able to borrow it from somebody else, but I would recommend getting your own miniatures when you find the army you wanna start with. Dice is another thing. Warhammer is played on six-sided dice. We also call them a D6. These are how all our rules are uh, interacting and uh, you may re require one or multiple D6. So dice are rather inexpensive. Games Workshop sell dice. Uh, you could pick them out of a board game that you already own. Uh, you could go pick up casino dice, though I probably wouldn't recommend that. But either way, dice are everywhere. Go pick yourself up some dice. Um, they're pretty simple. Rules, um, the rules are free. So the basic Age of Sigma rules are free and you can find them on the Games Workshop website or in the Age of Sigma app. Now, the, they're the foundation rules. You will wanna eventually pick up the latest General's Handbook, which is a book that provides a whole lot of structure around the types of missions that you could play. So some of the rules on interacting on the table, as well as how to build your army. Um, you also can find a book called a Battle Tome, and the Battle Tome come with additional rules specific to your army. So if you play with the army, these the Night Haunt that is currently sitting on the uh, on the screen, you could find a Battle Tome for the Night Haunt. But then you can see on the other side of this video that there is this Battle Tome called a uh, Cities of Sigma. So that would have all of the rules. It would have uh, uh, ways to kit up your army, um, some special interactions. Highly recommend grabbing a Battle Tome. You will need a measuring tape. The measuring tape is the instrument that we use to move your models around, to measure ranges and to see how our rules interact. You'll use it for movement, for magic, for shooting, for combat. Uh, our game is measured in inches. So if you pick up a tape measure, whether it's from a hardware store, whether it is from your local supermarket, or whether it's a games workshop tape measure, make sure that it comes in inches. We don't play in centimeters, we play in inches. You will need some space to play. So traditionally this, this game is played on either a board that is four feet by four feet wide. That's for smaller style games and six feet by four feet uh, in a larger style game. So as you're getting started, you'll probably only need to worry about that four by four. But if you are playing at home, you might wanna create a space on your kitchen table, on the floor, that is that four feet by four feet or six feet by four feet. Um, you may want to go to a hardware store and pick up some um, what's called MDF or chipboard and you can create those temporary gaming spaces in your table and your kitchen or you could uh, go just to those games clubs or those games workshops to play um, however you decide to play the game. The last and final thing you're going to need as a very basic is an opponent. So while it's going to be obvious that playing with your friend can be playing with yourself can be fun, uh, playing with a friend can be even better. Um, I don't mean playing with yourself like I just referred, I mean playing Warhammer, interacting with yourself. Don't go there, naughty folk. But in future videos, we'll talk about how the rules are gonna interact and how you can play the game. But know that finding an opponent, especially a variety of opponents, will get you a wonderful experience by playing against different armies. So how do you find your army? There's a lot of different ways that you can find your army. You could read some of the stories, you could be looking at the miniatures online or a games workshop. You might get a recommendation from your friend. For me, I've started a couple of different armies. I've been really drawn by the models and then also the play style. Certainly for you, it's gonna be hard to know where to start when it comes to a play style. And we'll talk a bit more about the ways you can play the game. But for me, some of the armies that I got really drawn to, and if you're following this channel, you will probably hear me speak a bit more passion about some of these armies. But Cities of Sigma, Gloom Spike Gits, as well as the Sons of Behemoth are probably the three armies that I got drawn to. Are oh, Legions and the Gash as well. We'll make it four. There were four armies that I've really been drawn to and I've played a lot. The Cities of Sigma represent the, the mortal citizens in the realm who are fighting for their life, trying to fight, you know, they're the average Joes. And you can see here on the screen, you've got the griffin, you've got, you know, you've got dragons, you've got humans, you've got uh, elves, you've got dwarves. You know, they are the mixed races in these cities trying to defend themselves. You've got the gloom spike gits, and the gits are uh, these cave dwelling creatures that follow the bad moon. And they are wonderful little goblins. They have these like bestial, uh, what they call the squig, and they bounce around and they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of painting of colors and uh, a very unique color scar. I can use pinks and purples and blues. Uh, and they're a lot of fun on the table as well. The Sons of Behemoth are these massive giants, these are called gargants. 
and I can't wait to be stomping around the table with them. But that's my journey. I've started by looking at the models, seeing how excited I'd be to paint some of these models. I might buy a couple, see how I go. If I like them, I'll continue. If I don't, I might sell them and try something different. So when we talk about Age of Sigma and finding your army, it might be worth starting off talking about the armies in Age of Sigma, and they start off with these big umbrellas and that I like to call, and they are the Grand Alliances. Imagine four big umbrellas and the different armies sit under one of these four umbrellas. These Grand Alliances are either the Grand Alliance of Order, Death, Destruction, and Chaos. When, it talk, when we talk about Order, the forces of order are the mortal realm shield against chaos. Order is a loosely alliance of free peoples of the realms, the humans, the elves, the Duardans, that city of the Sigma that I was talking about earlier, alongside the staunch defenders of the, the Stormcast Eternals, the more exotic forces like uh, Alariel Sylvaneth, or the mysterious Seraphon, as well as some of the more sinister forces with their own goals and agendas like the Ideneth Deepkin or the Daughters of Cain. Uh, order is not good. Order is order, and they represent following of a law. So they follow their, their truth and their passion, not necessarily are they the good guys. And in fact, I don't think there is any good or bad guys in this. It depends on the lens that you come from and the motivations that are driving the force. I think everyone is good and bad in their own way here. The only constant in mortal realms is death, and that is the Grand Alliance death. That is from the place of Shaiish, which is the realm of death. The great necromancer rules upon the dead and sends them out to do their bidding. They are the classic undead, but also some very interesting twists to the undead, and we'll talk about that in a minute. You've got the rampaging across the mortal realms is the force of nature, the forces of destruction that, that head along into battle. They are the, the green-skinned hordes of the orcs and the grots, as well as the tribes of ogres and the, the, the bestial gargants and some of the most primitive monsters come out of destruction. Finally, you have the gods of chaos, who are a, a, a primitive, primeval force dedicated to conquering the mortal realms. And there are a bunch of different gods. You've got the uh, got Korn, you've got Slanesh, you've got Nurgle, and you've got Zench. And you've got some other forces in chaos, but they are all coming from the mortal, the, the realms of chaos, with their demon, demonic forces, as well as the mortals who follow the dark gods and you will see the Dark Legions all trying to claim over the mortal realms from Sigma. The Grand Alliance Chaos is the Dark Gods sending forth their demonic legions into the world. So who are the Grand Alliance Chaos? Well, you have the Blades of Corn. Corn is the mightiest of all the gods, for he is Rage Incarnate, the savage host of mortals and demons that are frenzied killers. Blood for the Blood God, skulls for the throne of Corn. You have the Disciples of Zench, the sorceress leader who rains curses and spells of transmutation on their foes until there's only hideous ruins left behind them. You have the Maggot Kin of Nurgle, the Grandfather Papa Nurgle, where, who are horrific to look upon. Their peeling flesh, stomachs are bloated with corpus gases and charnel stenches of the fate remaining of decay that is within all creatures. You have the Heed Knights of Slanesh, who is no one is safe from the Dark Prince. For the Dark Prince embodies the hidden lusts and desires that nestles within everybody's soul. You have the Skaven Tide, which are the hunched rat man things. They are half man, half rat, half corrupted, half crazy. And it's their manacle inventiveness and cunningness that makes them a threat to the mortal realms. Grand Alliance Death is the, the undead hosts of the, that roam the mortal realms that were once the stuff of nightmarish legends. Since the age of chaos, the realms have been strewn upon the corpses of the slaughtered. And since Nagash caused the great cataclysm of Shaiish, that really the air has grown thick of death magic. So Nagash is the great, uh, the great necromancer. He is the lord of death. And within the Grand Alliance Death, you have the Legions of Nagash. Nagash is the great necromancer, the Lord of Death. And you will find classic undead here, full of vampires, necromancers, skeletons, zombies, and everything in between. You have the Flesh Eater Courts, who believe themselves as noble knights. But actually, in truth, they're delusional, vile, troglodytic, possessed, 
horrific hunger ghouls. You have the Night Haunt, which are the ethereal spirits that roam the mortal realms, driven by the darkest emotions of inflicted horror upon the, the living. And finally, the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, who are the elite militaristic undead forces who are organized, efficient, and are here to reap the bone tide. Grand Alliance Destruction is the rampaging horde of destruction, plunging headlong into battle, looking for the slightest reason for provocation. Now, who are the armies of the Grand Alliance Destruction? You have Gloom Spike Gits, one of the armies that I spoke about, one of my absolute favorite. They are the worshippers of the Bad Moon. And while they are individually small, weak, and cowardly, when they band together, these grots are as deadly with a green tide wave full of squigs and spiders and trolls and everything else. It's just crazy cool. You got the Auric War Clans, who are the biggest and fiercest orcs across the mortal realms, who are both both brutal and cunning. They are here for one thing, and that is for a fight, and they want a good fight. Finally, you have the Ogre Moor Tribes, who are the nomadic ogres who ride these immense war beasts into battle and are followed by the Everwinter. Or you have the gut-busting ogres with this insatiable hunger for flesh and you'll actually find they'll get these really cool, this pot where you've got these butchers and they just want to eat human flesh and elf flesh and they just want to eat and they're just constantly hungry. Kind of feels like me sometimes. Finally, you've got Grand Alliance Order. We are constantly fighting against chaos. They are the shield wall protecting the weak and vulnerable, but also they are struck by law. They aren't good. They are following law, duty, and oath that guides their blades. So who are some of the armies in Grand Alliance? So a couple of the armies, and not everyone, there are a few more that we haven't spoken about here, but you've got you know, the Stormcast Eternal, who are the God King Sigmar's ultimate soldiers, who when they die, get reforged. And as they die, they lose more and more of themselves as they get remade by Sigmar. You have the Cities of Sigmar, which are those settlements that uh, I mentioned earlier of the humans, the elves and the dwarves that have really allied together um, through the hardest of times and attempting to rebuild settlements in the, pro in, the, in the name of progress for order. You have the Sylvaneth, who are spiteful spirit kins of the forest, who defend their realms against anyone who would defile the forest and nature. You've got the Caradron Overlords, who are the steampunky ma masters of technology, and they are they're dw they're dwarves, they're Dwarden, and they have these amazing flying ships that come in, and these deadly war machines of battle just come in and just smoke their opponents. You've got the Iden the Deepkin, who are this otherworldly elf raiders where there's a whole crazy story behind them but basically just know that these elves live underwater and they ride eels and turtles and sharks and very cool they are here to to steal steal the souls to stay alive for their people finally the daughters of canaan is another one we can speak about which is the religious order of these elves hailing from the realm of shadow who are believing that they are following a god but actually they're being tricked they are they're following it's it's pretty cool and uh marathi uh is quite amazing so the daughters of cain is another really cool army a mostly female force uh, and there's a really cool kind of story behind why So depending on the situation, there are a number of different ways that you can get into Warhammer Age of Sigma. As I mentioned earlier, if you have friends playing and you've got a few dollars to spend, there are these amazing start collecting boxes which have incredible value and an easy way to get into the hobby. There is a wide range of these sets that will often include a leader, some troops, as well as maybe a monster or a, a war machine or something else. They're very, very cool boxes and you'll save a few dollars in the process as well. If you have a friend who wants to start as well, you could split one of these two-player boxes. So they come with a predetermined force. They'll come with, you know, in the example here, there is um, some ogres and some bone reapers, but these boxes get rotated and there's different boxes that come out all the time. So definitely jump onto them. You'll get some accessories, you'll get some measurements, you'll get some dice, you'll get a whole bunch of things to get you started with these two-player boxes. 
If you don't want to significantly invest in the market early, you may want to start practicing before you paint. I know at a lot of Games Workshop stores, they'll have some models that you can start paint, painting and kind of learning the basics, but also you might want to look at some of the secondhand markets like eBay or Facebook. However, they can, they can be at times expensive if you don't know what you're looking for, or people have built the models. And to be honest, building is half the fun. So uh, if you don't have a lot of dollars and you just want to put your toes in the water, maybe look at the secondhand market to begin with. But there is nothing better than buying a box, unclipping it from the sprue, gluing it, painting it, uh, and kind of bringing it from zero to a hundred. While you can play these games, you know, you can start thinking about there are you can take any of these models and play with it however you like you know um, if you're playing with your friends there's absolutely no reason you can't play with whatever rules you want to play with however we are governed if you want to start being playing with other people there is something called match play which is basically a equalizer to say you bring a force that is similar to mine it's very equal in nature and we'll have a balanced game um, now, some, some armies will be stronger than others, but know that, that that General's Handbook that we spoke about earlier does give you all of the rules and the guidance on how to have more of that balanced force. Most people will start by building a 1,000 point army, that might be their first goal, and then eventually build up to a, what is called a 2,000 point battle. Now, that's probably the standard figure across the Age of Sigma, but certainly not the only games played. So, uh, when you start looking at how to build your army, Keep that in mind that 1,000 points and 2,000 points might be the two goals that you strive towards. Another consideration with the armies is how they interact on the table. Now again, I'll break down this down a little bit more in a future video, but to give you a bit of a high level and start to think about, well, which army is for me and what's the style that I really like to, uh, what, what style do I like? You have armies that are great in close combat. These armies get into melee and they show their true strength by beating their army in close combat. You have range shooting. So the, if you like the idea of taking your opponent down from distance, from choosing your targets and slowly disbanding their force, you know, you might want to build a shooting army. You've got powerful heroes that, if you love the idea that's built around this, this godlike hero, this amazing hero or heroes, maybe you want more than one hero, maybe a reincarnation of a god, an almighty wizard, a vicious killing machine. These are all different examples that you might want to build up and around a powerful hero. Alternatively, some of these powerful heroes can also be amazing spell casters. So if you don't want a, a close combat, you know, very strong kind of hero, but maybe rather a powerful wizard, then spell casting and magic you can get and really de defeat your opponent through raw magical supremacy um, and casting spells and making it harder for them to, to, to kill you is a lot of fun. You have armies that are fast moving. If you like the idea of moving around the battlefield, choosing where the battle takes place, uh, forcing your opponent to take tough decisions, or maybe securing those objectives early uh, and dominating the board, then fast movement might be for you. Thinking about elite forces, if you wanna have less models in your army and you like the idea of only bringing the best warriors to the table, then you may wanna look for an army that is built around having uh, less models and maybe higher quality of models or alternatively you're like nah i just want to have all of these smallest little armies the weaklings i just want to throw them and flood the board and overwhelm them with sheer numbers and clog up the battlefield and stop people from get getting to the objective purely by a wall of bodies then you might want to go from a more of a horde force finally one of my personal favorites is the monster mash if you love the idea of running around deadly monsters and terrifying your opponents with speed, high damage, sustainability, then uh, you know, and they're able to sustain a large amount of damage, then you might want to build around a monster mash. By the way, when I talk about all these things, close combat range, powerful heroes, they're not mutually exclusive. You can have a close combat powerful hero army. You can build a fast moving wizard army. You can build a monster army that is also tied up with, with the, a lot of cheap bodies. Maybe you've got a couple of big monsters and then the rest of it is just these real cheap little uh, models like the goblins who are just going to kind of surround the body and kind of chip away and then help get the monster and go like, rah. But either way, whatever it might be, here are some things for you to consider. Do, what do I like the sound of? 
The most common way to play Age of Sigmar is through that system called match play. I did kind of briefly touch on it before, and I will unpack it a lot more in future videos. But basically, matched play is a way to bring a comparable force between you and your opponent. So that's awesome if you're going to go to a local game store, if you're going to go to a tournament and you don't know the opponent, you know, you know that you are playing 2,000 points or 1,000 points and it is a comparable force. It makes it equal, it makes it feel like you have it, you're in for a fight and you know, you, you're going to have a great game. So in order to build this thing called match play or this way to build out an army, there are different, uh, there are different roles that uh, our models play. So you will have some things that are leaders. So these leaders are heroic champions in your army. They are the often the fiercest and strongest warriors. They are the arcane wizards who tap into the, the magic potential, the religious priests that call upon the favor of the gods. These are the heroes that are going to lead your, uh, your army to victory. But you need, a, you need battle line. You need these troops that are going to support your army. So these, the, your, your basic troops are called battle line, and these are the standard troops that will attempt to, to hold the battlefield, to defend your leaders, to overwhelm your enemies, and to maybe protect some of those more elite or those monster forces. You have artillery. Artillery are the war machine that bring hell from afar, and they will whittle your opponent down before the close combat begins. You have something called a behemoth. Now, a behemoth are often representing the monsters in the mortal realms. Some of those monsters are ridden into battle. Maybe you have troops, maybe you have a leader riding on there. Sometimes they act alone and they don't have anyone riding on there. Your behemoths do serious damage to your opponent, but often when you see that big monster on the table, they are the first thing that your opponent will want to kill. So uh, the monster mash, while it's fun, uh, people know what to look out for. So be smart about your decisions. There are other things as well. There are some other month, some other units that don't meet that criteria. So if a unit isn't a leader, a battle line, a artillery, a behemoth, uh, there are other things that might come in and uh, they just don't play that role, but they are in your army. We have other things like the endless spells here. Endless spells are a physical representation of magic that you can unleash onto your force. There are terrain, so, you, so some armies will come with, um, with things like a battalion, uh, you have scenery, these rules, uh, this, this terrain piece will give you specific rules or benefits to your army and not available to other people. Um, and there are things like allies as well, so um, I'm not going to overcomplicate some of these rules. The next video we'll talk about building up the force and the requirements and if you play under match play with that general's handbook, it will tell you the requirements of how to build your force. It'll tell you you're allowed to have X amount of heroes. You have to have a minimum of X amount of battle line. You're allowed X amount of monsters, whatever it might be. It will tell you how to build your force again to, um, to have that, that comparable force between you and your opponent. Find an army that you like the look of. Think about what you're going to enjoy painting, what you're going to like to play and grab those models and start the journey. Every Citadel model has a war scroll. So a war scroll is the rules that you're going to need to use to play this Age of Sigmar game. The rules, again, I mentioned are free. If you look at the app, you look at the Games Workshop uh, website, you will find the war scrolls. They are free and you will find a whole bunch of information that I'll talk about in the next video to kind of understand it. It has the movement characteristics. It has the armor saves, so the role that you need to protect yourself if someone tries to do damage has some special rules and it has a whole bunch of things. The War Scroll will provide you all the information you need to play the game. Uh, those War Scrolls are free and they are complementary to the additional rules that you get in a Battle Tome. Again, I'm not, I don't want to overcomplicate it just yet in this first video. We'll break it down and kind of really analyze a bit more about what this all means. But just know that if you want to know how this rule, this game plays, just like, you know, if you play chess and you, you know that uh, a horse, the horsey moves a certain way, the queen moves a certain way, every model on the table has a certain way of playing, Age of Sigmar is no different. The final considerations that I have for you, and I hope by now you have a much clearer understanding of Warhammer Age of Sigmar and how to get started into the game. 
It is new, it is exciting, and it's full of possibilities. I have met so many amazing, amazing people playing this game. I have played this game domestically in my local city. I have traveled, um, I have traveled to other states in Australia. I have played internationally. Uh, I never started with the YouTube channel when I played Edge of Sigma, but I was so inspired that I wanted to create this channel. These things I've never expected. I've made wonderful friends. I've had amazing opportunities. I've got to meet so many cool people like you. So this, I, I can't speak highly enough of getting into this community. You're gonna have an absolute ball. But there is some final things I want to share with you before we end this chapter. A couple of things I want you to consider is the cost. I want you to think about how much you're willing to spend in this hobby. Some of the armies are more expensive than others. Um, you don't need to buy everything immediately. So just dip your toes into the water, grab a start collecting box and, and start to get familiar with the system. Your, your painting will build up over time. You will learn how to play the game better. You will understand how to build a force and what you will need to play on the table. So worry about that later. Just jump in, don't get overwhelmed and, and get into the fun. The other consideration I would have is painting. So do you have a favorite color? Do you have a color scheme that you want to use? Are you new to Warhammer painting or have you been painting miniatures or painting other things in the past? Maybe you painted model cars or painted, I don't know, canvases. Um, some of the models are easier to paint than others. Now there is no rule to say that you can't paint a certain model the way you want to paint it. But some armies do lend to look better with a certain scheme. So keep that in mind, there are some cheap models that you could practice with, things like Ogres, things like Stormcast Eternals are cheap and easy to practice on before moving into your army. So practice, 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 we all started somewhere. The last and final consideration I wanted to share with you is the amount of models that you wanna have. Do you wanna play with an army with a lot of models or a small amount of models? My Gloom Spike Kits army that I was talking about earlier probably is about 200 models that I put on the table in a 2000 point game. That's a lot of models to paint, to buy, and to move around on the table. And in the game, there's often a time limit, so it can be quite exhausting to make faster decisions. But I really enjoy that, and it's something that I didn't start with, but I built up over time. So think about the how many models you might want to have in your army. You've got to transport them as well, and we'll talk about transport later. But each, each build and each army has, has strengths, and weaknesses. Um, whatever you choose, just remember you're going to paint them and you're going to have fun with them. So uh, don't forget to think about the models so, as well. I hope this video helped you guys. This is the first of the chapter. You should feel a bit more confident to get started. And I hope to see you on the next video. And don't forget, there are a whole bunch of other videos that you could watch to learn about the different armies, about the tactics and play styles on AOS Coach. Mate, how good was that video? Surely it's going to go straight to the pool room. If you enjoyed that video, I would appreciate it if you crush that like button and if you have an opinion, leave it in the comment section. That lets YouTube know it's a great video and it should share it with other Age of Sigma players. Cheers to all the bloody legends here on the screen who have financially supported AOS Coach on Patreon on YouTube members. Their contributions have helped me improve the quality, frequency and the variety of content on this channel. So cheers guys, you are bloody legends. Until the next video, don't forget to shoot the heroes and have a good one.